A lot of the videos on my channel talk about public transport in Australia and in Canada. And a lot of the comments on those videos go back and forth between whether Canada or Australia has better public transit. My answer, as usual, would be, it depends. Australia and Canada have very different public transit systems, but in today's video I want to make the case that the intersection of these two public transit worlds is possibly the perfect transit system, at least for a city. And I mean I think it's kind of interesting to compare Australia and Canada, because despite the fact that we have strengths which are basically the opposite of one another, we're very similar countries with big land masses with a number of large cities spread throughout and fairly good urban transit, especially compared to some other English speaking countries. So let's talk about what makes transit good in Canada, what makes it good in Australia, and how you could bring this together for the perfect transit system. Hey there, my name's Reese, and I run the channel RM Transit about public transit around the world. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and consider subscribing. Let's start off this video by looking at each country's urban transit strengths. Canada obviously has a stronger series of metro systems across the country, from Montreal to Vancouver and Toronto. All of these systems operate really respectable, high frequency service, and serve fairly dense walkable areas. They're also very modern systems. They basically have entirely straight platforms, they often have digital CBTC signaling, and they're also starting to dabble in things like platform screen doors. We've also struck Metro Gold in a few places with Spanish solution boarding and cross-platform transfers. The Australian solution for dense urban city centre transit tends to be a city centre suburban rail tunnel that provides access to the city centre for suburban trains. And the country is building quite a few more of these, with the Metro Tunnel in Melbourne set to open in the next few years, as well as Cross River Rail in Brisbane. Canada and Australia also both have trams, mostly in one city each. Toronto streetcar's advantages include more dedicated road space and better frequencies, while Melbourne's system is just kind of better overall. It's more extensive, the infrastructure and operations are better, the vehicles are more modern, and it's faster. At the same time, light rail in both countries isn't limited to the single light rail metropolis. Sydney's light rail, in particular the L2 and L3 lines that are fairly new, are really nice, including the pedestrianization of George Street in central Sydney, which is just beautiful, and the really nice vehicles and stops. It's just kind of a cut above anything we have in Canada right now. What Canada does have is really interesting city train systems, in particular in Alberta. These are great for providing a metro-like service, but for lower prices and on corridors that have lower demand. A city like Adelaide, for example, would be really well suited to building a metro-type system based on city trains. It's actually really similar in size to Calgary, for example. And as it turns out, the strengths in suburban transit in both Australia and Canada are even more complementary, or the holes are even bigger. Let's try to be glass half full. Australian cities do suburban rail really well, with modern electric multiple unit trains, typically quite extensive networks and good service, internationally standard ETS signaling rolling out in a number of places across the country, and lots of new corridors being built to newly developing areas and major trip generators like say airports and sports stadiums. While Australia doesn't have good intercity rail, its suburban rail systems are totally in line with a lot of systems you see in Europe and Asia. But Canada does have a trick up its sleeve, far better suburban bus service. And while buses aren't all that exciting, to most people, if you're watching this video you may well be excited by buses, as I am, the buses are actually really valuable. Canadian suburban bus routes often move huge numbers of people, I'm talking rail numbers of people. And a lot of Canadian cities have created pretty respectable BRT or BRT light systems that take things even further. I'd also reiterate that I think the Toronto night bus network is one of the best night bus networks in the world. Combining the high frequency suburban buses of Canadian cities with the electric suburban trains of Australian cities would create really the perfect combination for high quality suburban transit service. You can use the buses for crosstown journeys or for connecting to a train station and you use the trains to get to the city centre fast. But it would probably be even better if Canada adopted the more liberal Australian approach to buying buses from around the world. While well, Canada's buses are okay, we just don't have stuff that competes with the buses out of European manufacturers, which Australia just buys from. 
That being said, with Solaris now coming to North America, maybe things will get a bit better over here. But doing transit better also means better land use, and Canada and Australia are both bad at this in these suburbs in particular. That being said, I think Canadian cities are really strong when it comes to things like the character of development. Vancouver, for example, has fantastic suburban transit-oriented development, and Montreal has missing middle housing that isn't actually missing. Australian developments, though, they feel higher quality. There's a higher standard of architecture, of design, of construction. And so if you looked at the same development built in both countries, the Australian one would just be nicer. Also, to be fair, probably my favorite suburban transit-oriented development is in Australia. Chatswood is just so nice. What's funny is that there's also some common ground. Both Canada and Australia have dabbled in busways a lot. Ottawa started this trend and then Brisbane learned from Ottawa and built its own series of busways and is upgrading them in probably a more logical way. Rest in peace, Ottawa busways. Adelaide even has the Oban, which is weird and possibly wonderful. That is still up for debate. Busways can be a really good solution in the right context, but my opinions on them are mixed. I made a video up here about that. So a combination of the good from Aussie and Canuck transit cities would kind of just be a great transit city. You'd have high quality electric suburban trains running into the city center, fed at suburban nodes, which would have really high quality transit oriented development, and a ton of high frequency tram and bus service running into them. Those buses would probably come from European manufacturers and would serve routes that are surrounded with middle density. The tram networks wouldn't serve the outer suburbs, but they'd serve the inner suburbs and cross through into the city center. They'd provide high frequency service with signal priority and lots of dedicated space on streets. These tram routes would be supplemented by metro on the busiest corridors, as well as on corridors where trams wouldn't easily fit, and on crosstown routes to boost network resiliency, but also to make the network as a whole less radial. The lower demand metro services could run further out into the suburbs with city trains being able to handle level crossings. You'd also have a bit more flexibility with their tighter turning radius and they'd be able to operate more services. Finally, you'd have a number of city center tunnels which connect the suburban railways across the city center, providing an express metro overlay in the city center as well as a direct link from the suburbs to the city itself. So basically Paris, but with city trains. I've already talked about how Paris is kind of the perfect transit city up here because it uses all of the different transit modes so effectively. But before my Australian and Canadian viewers get too cocky about some sort of weird hybrid city that is half Australian and half Canadian, it's good to remind you that Paris still does have something on both Canada and Australia, and that's these things.